Olis. In this video, you will see the iconic architecture of Paraná, 30 the 3rd of February, and learn a little bit about Argentine Freemasonry. At the beginning of the 19th century, Paraná was just a small settlement. By 1860, the population of Paraná was only 10,084 people, where 1,349 of them being foreigners. Today, the city stretches over an area of 137 square kilometers with a population of around 250,000 people, ranking 14th in size. The most prosperous family during that time was a British-Spanish family, Aslam Suarez, who rapidly acquired lands paying with the Bolivian pesos. But why Bolivian pesos and not Argentine? Because at that time, there were no reserve world currencies like the US dollars or euro, and Bolivian pesos were among the quoted currencies in Latin America. It is remarkable that even in the local museums of Paraná, there isn't a single display of money, although the currency's emissions were a regular occurrence here. I was absolutely fortunate to see the famous Bolivian peso in the hand of a private collector. During the 80s, 60s and 70s, the province of Entre Rios also issued peso fuerte banknotes. And I'm really wondering about the size of the wallets in order to accommodate such notes. Look at them! Peatonal San Martin, one of the oldest streets, named in honor of the father of the nation. Stretching for almost a kilometer, it is famous for its collection of unique 19th century buildings. This is the Spanish Mutual Aid Society, Sociedad Española de Socorros Mutos. It was built in 1895 with the aim of preserving cultural and genealogical ties with immigrants' home countries. The renowned Basque architect Santo Domingues Ibinguria incorporated Moorish style with beautiful Arabic elements into its design. This is the most popular pedestrian road in Paraná, housing numerous shops, banks, gym and cafes. The Bergoglio Palace, El Palacio Bergoglio, was constructed in the eclectic French style and the building's designer was Senor Cavallo. At the points, this building accommodated the Orquisa cinema with a retractable roof, the luxuries El Polo Norte bar, and the first elevator in the city. However, the building is the most interesting because it was once the residence of the grandfather, uncles, and the parents of the Pope Francis, Jorge Mario Bergoglio. This area once was known as so-called Black District, El Barrio de los Negros, where escaped slaves from Brazil used to live. But today the Central Avenue, Avenida Alameda de la Federación, runs through it and the residential zone is considered as the prestigious. How times have changed! Here, on Alvear Square, you can find the Museum of the Fine Arts and the Church of the Saint Archangel Michael, Parroquia San Miguel Archangel, the patron saint of the province. It features an eclectic architectural style with a clear influence of the neo-Gothic elements. In 1822, priest Antolin Gil y Obligado proposed the project and its construction began in the same year. In 2019, the restoration of the aging building was completed. The Catholic Church of San Miguel is the oldest in Paraná, still active to this day. The theater of the February 3rd was built in 1852 and still is an active structure. The construction was initiated on the order of General Urquiza and the project was conceived by José Quirce, the director of the Dramatic Society of Buenos Aires. A prominent Swiss architect, Lorenzo Siegerist, was enlisted for the construction. The theater's opening premiere welcomed 900 guests. 
From the foyer, guests enter a horseshoe-shaped hall. The hall comprises four levels. Platea, palcos, tertulia, y paraíso. The theater exhibits noticeable eclecticism, combining characteristic features of Italian Renaissance with the elegance of German Baroque and the grace of the French architecture. As the hall is designed in accordance with the Baroque canons, you can notice the richness of the stucco works and paintings. The ceiling was painted by the Italian artist Italo Piccioli, who aimed to recreate an idea of the infinity of the blue sky, adding angelic imagery. acoustics in this theater. It's just a pleasure to listen to the music of the greatest artists here. Well then, let's go back to architecture of Paraná. Those buildings that represent a high historical value, even if partially ruined, are reconstructed over time. It is prohibited to demolish such buildings. Their facades are restored and then new construction works are allowed behind them. The building of the first and most well-known daily newspapers in the province, El Diario, which has been in existence since 1914. Masonic elements in the architecture of Paraná can be noticed almost everywhere. On one of the oldest streets, Andres Pasos, you can see an almost inconspicuous red brick building. This is where the Masonic lodges Logias Masonicas en la Ciudad de Paraná are located. According to the book La Masonería en la Historia Argentina by Jordan Genta, the initial directives came from the Masonic Lodges of New York, La Gran Logia, with the aim of combating Catholicism and the influence of the Spanish crown on the spirit of the Argentine people. San Martín, the liberator of the nation, in 1812 opened a Masonic lodge in Buenos Aires named Logia Lautaro as part of the European Masonic lodges. During that time, Masonic lodges were established in significant numbers in strategic locations across the country where San Martín was active. His Masonic activities were directed towards the liberation of Argentina, the acquisition of sovereignty for Latin America from Spanish rule, and the independence from any foreign power. The People's Library, Biblioteca Popular, was founded in 1873 and was one of the prestigious institutions of the city. And here you can see the influence of the Masonic lodges as well. 
and some of the most renowned architects of that time, including Rodolfo Fasciolo e Jacobo Pedro Storti. In 2006, the building was declared a National Historic Monument, and it houses over 75,000 books in the collection. In the next video, I will introduce you to the Urquiza Park, the celebration of Argentina's Independence Day and the cultural life of Paraná. Hasta prontito!